This One News update is brought to you by the new ANZ. One News can reveal doctors are accepting thousands of dollars in gifts and travel from drug companies. Some DHBs say they have nothing to hide. Others keep no record of what their staff have received. Jahan Casanada has this exclusive story and joins us live. Jahan. Good evening. Well, in New Zealand, the government buys medicines like this through its drug agency, Pharmac. But it's doctors who decide which drugs are prescribed and in what quantities. Now, we've discovered some of those doctors are receiving gifts, travel and even cash from drug manufacturers. Honolulu, Taiwan, Singapore and France. Some of the places visited by public sector health workers. Their travel costs paid by commercial drug giants. All of those gifts came with a price. A third of DHBs say their staff have received benefits. Some have had their travel bills paid, allowing them to go to conferences. Doctors are accepting fees to give speeches and lectures. Some DHBs have even accepted cash donations from drug companies. The practice is common, according to one professor who now turns those companies away. It became clear after a couple of years of being wined and dined that in fact I was being targeted for my usefulness to them. The two DHBs which have accepted the greatest amounts are Capital and Coast and Counties Manuko. Neither would give us an interview, but told us they expect the receipt of goods and services to benefit patients. They have policies preventing personal benefit and undue influence. There is research that says that even when people don't think they are being influenced by some of these relatively simple things, they are being influenced. Our clinical decision making is affected. We often make worse prescribing decisions and certainly more costly prescribing decisions. The Medical Council says drug companies help doctors access useful training and development. Any doctor involved in these kinds of activities needs to be open and transparent and disclosing about it. But six DHBs couldn't tell us what their staff had received because they don't keep records of it. Even the perception of that is really problematic and I think it really undermines the trust and confidence you know, of the general public. For the leaders of DHBs, that could be a bitter pill to swallow. Jahan, you've been speaking with the Health Minister. What's his reaction? Well, Tony Ryle says he expects doctors and nurses to abide by the codes of conduct that they've signed. Now, as a result of this story, he'll be asking all DHBs to standardise their reporting around gifts, hospitality and travel. Now, that'll mean some DHBs will have to improve their record keeping and be more upfront with you about their links with drug companies. That's Jahan Casanada in Wellington. Thank you. This One News update is brought to you by the new ANZ.